In today's video, we're going to go ahead and take a look at the Distant Joint 2D. So to set this up, I'm taking that polygon we had in our last video. So I've got a collider on it. It's just a, a hexagon. I have a collider on it. I've gone ahead and added a rigid body 2D. I've changed none of the settings. And I'm also going to go ahead and add the Distant Joint 2D. Let's zoom out a bit so we can see it. And the first thing I want to look at is, well, you have the ability to have it just be connected to some place in space, which we can change. This is just world space. So we can go ahead and move this around. And if we went ahead and hit play, it'll be tied to that space. Well, not too bad. You could have a, you know, the Indiana Jones ball trap type thing going. That's kind of cool. But you can also go ahead and connect it to another rigid body. So I'm going to take my player and drag it into the connected rigid body. And if we look at my player, it does have a rigid body on it. And then you can go ahead and set where you want it to be according to each rigid body's local space. Now I've been having trouble when I hit auto configure. I lose the line. And even when I uncheck it, it's still gone. Oops, let me get back into 2D. So I'm going to undo that, get that back. So I guess just be mindful of that when you're clicking around on it. And clicking the blue dots and the circle to move them around does seem to be a little finicky. Now it does snap to my pivot point when I get to my character, but maybe I don't want it there. Maybe, I don't know, it's, it's a balloon or something like that, and I want it to actually be connected to my hand. Any place you want it connected, you can drag and drop it, or of course you can use the properties over here and slide it around that way. Well, it did snap there for me as well. I did not realize that. But anyway, I'm just going to go ahead and snap it to my hand. And now when we go ahead and hit play, it'll be attached to me. And now I'm not jumping. It's keeping a specific distance away from me. And it's always that distance away from me, regardless of where I go. Let's go ahead. We'll stop that. Now by default, auto configure distance is checked, but we can uncheck that and set our own distance. And with it unchecked, you see the two little bars here. Zoom in a bit. That's going to denote the distance. And of course, you can go ahead, play around with that. So let's make it a bit, bit, bit further. Now when I start it up, because they're so close together, or at least not at max distance, there's going to be a force applied to push them apart. So let's see if I can use this as a pole vault. There we go. <laughs> And of course, drag it up the hill. Now the next parameter for max distance only, if we check this box, it's only going to worry about not exceeding the max distance. It can get closer. It just cannot get further than the max distance. Let's start this up. And there we go. If I can get close, and of course when I hit that max distance, I start towing it around. Now that leads up to the top here, the one I skipped, the Enable Collision. This, al this allows the two rigid bodies to be able to collide with each other. And if we go ahead and start this up, I can now stand on it and push it around. Oh, can I get it up over the, he the hedge? Come on. Ah, <laughs> oh, come on. Anyway. Ah, well, that's another game. <laughs> we'll play with that later. All right, so we've looked at Enable Collision, Connect to Bridge Your Body, Auto Configure, the Anchors, and I'm not sure if I specified, but of course the Anchor is where the Anchor is on our actual rigid Body that has the Distant Joints 2D attached to it. And the Connected Anchor is either the place in World Space that you have it attached to or the local space of the other rigid Body you have it attached to. And it looks like the only thing left is the Break Free. By default, it's set to infinity. The link cannot be broken, but we can actually go ahead and put a value in there. And if the force ever exceeds this value, the link will be broken. So something like this, you could set up where if you touch, let's say this uh, polygon, and I go ahead and I don't know, hit the F key, I could then connect to it, and then I could tow it along. But if I, I move too quick, 
and create too much force between the objects, then the, the link would break and I'd have to go back and reconnect. Let's take a look at that. So here we are. I've got it. Let me zoom up a bit. And as I go, if I go slow enough, I can pull it. But if I go too quick, it breaks. And of course, we have to add the code that when we collide with it and hit F, we could grab it again. Let's take one more look at that. So it comes down. We can let it sit and rest. Let's see if I can tow it all the way up without breaking the link. Whoop. That bounce is not... Oh, I went over the edge. It was close enough. Hopefully you understand. But anyway, that's it. I think it's actually a, quite a cool component to add to your games. And I can't wait to see what you're going to make with it. Anyway, as always, I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that subscribe button down below. It really does help me out here on YouTube. And go ahead and follow me on Twitter. You're a pretty chatty guy over there. When I'm not walking through a forest. Or being stalked by eagles. And falcons. Lions, tigers, and bears.